Все, мы пришли в Глэшер Гарден. Вот наш самый первый цветок. Воздух изумительный. Adventure! I love it here, and I, I take the tour and I love it all the time. It never changes. It's always a lot of fun, folks. If we follow up, we'll fan out underneath the upside down flower tower. Glacier Gardens trademark here. Let's fan up, folks. You'll have plenty of time, folks. To take pictures after the tour, like they used to say in New York City, read all about it. Let's pull up here under the upside down flower towers, folks. Please fan out so I can you can all hear me. You'll have plenty of time to take pictures, folks. Please bring up the tail so I can start the intro. Okay, folks, my name is Russ. I'm going to tell you about the facts and history of Glacier Gardens, how it began. In about 1994, Stephen City wanted to expand their retail nursery business. They wanted to put three nurseries there, but decided to just put one big building, which we call now a visitor center. They bought the six and a half acres, and they got a good price because this place here was the site of a devastating landslide in 1984. Now this landslide started on Thunder Mountain at about the 1500 foot elevation. By the way, folks, they call it Thunder Mountain because landslides, when they start, sound like thunder. Now as this landslide slid down the mountain from the 1500 foot elevation, hit the 500 foot elevation out of our land, rolling down 100 foot knocking down 100 foot trees, rolling down boulders large and small, and just putting a slurry of material in this stream. It just destroyed this stream, folks. And then it slid down further and knocked out our neighbor's garage. And then it slid down further and put about a story high of rubble on the old Glacier Highway. As it slid further, it took out the Smith Farm Silo. Now I tell you about the Smith Farm because in 1984, folks, they owned this area, this six and a half acres. The Juno City Management wanted to figure out how they were going to get that story high of rubble, what they were going to do with it. So the Smith Family Farm said, all right, go ahead and push it up on our property. So they did. So this not only was the site of a landslide, it was also a story of rubble was pushed up off the Glacier Highway onto this area. Though, to tell you the nature of Steve and Cindy Bowie, they rolled up their sleeves. They worked on their stream over here and restored it back to beautiful again. They cleared the area over here, put up their greenhouse. As they worked up through the botanical gardens, folks, they also noticed that there was another blockage that would threaten their greenhouse. They thought that they were going to have another landslide. So what they did, folks, is Steve and Cindy got together and had a powwow. What they decided in 1996, folks, was to do something about it. They wanted to ensure that the beauty of the botanical gardens would never be bothered by a landslide again. Knock on wood. So far, 17 years, folks, there's been no landslide. Well, as they were following up the mountains and, and, and working on the affected areas and making, the, the, making sure that this stream was beautiful, also up Thunder Mountain, did a lot of nice work, moved boulders, moved logs. Well, as they were going up the mountain, it resulted in a view, very beautiful path, about a two-mile path, weaving through the mountain, through the botanical gardens, through the glacier gardens, up the mountain to about the 600-foot uh, elevation, folks with a beautiful cliffside view for you. And I'm not going to ruin it for you. You can see it up there for yourself. And as you come down, folks, you'll also see a half mile of the Tungus National Forest, which Steve and Cindy are so happy that they applied for this permit and got accepted. So now, folks, you can go through the Tungus National Forest for about a half mile on this tour for your enjoyment, folks. So, in 1998, they opened up Glacier Gardens Rainforest Adventure for your enjoyment.
Now, I bet you're wondering about these trademark upside down flower towers in the lower garden, folks, are you? Got any idea? Did you hear any rumors? Well, I'm going to tell you the real McCoy truth. Steve was working on one of his settlement pools, which actually there's five of them strategically placed through the glacier gardens to prevent landslides, catch swollen creek water, and debris. Also, once a year, he'll dredge it out so it doesn't get too full and keep this area down here safe from landslides. Well, while he was working on one of the settlement areas, he grabbed a, he rented a brand new excavator. He took this excavator and grabbed a beautiful rock that he saw. This is now called Steve's Rock. He grabbed this rock and moved about 30 yards. Then moved to the left at about the 18th hour of the day because we get so much sunlight here in Alaska so we get to work a lot of hours sometimes. Well, he turned to the left and all of a sudden he heard a big crack. He had banged into a fallen tree log, folks. This fallen tree log ran right into his motor compartment. Steve, being so upset about the repair bill he was going to have to face, decided to blow off a lot of steam. So what he did was, is grab a tree log by the root ball, folks, lift it straight up in the air, and just slam it into the mountainside. He couldn't believe his eyes. He had a vision. It stood straight up and down. The roots were just flailing off. The dirt was flowing down. It looked like one of his petunia baskets in his brand new nursery. He couldn't believe it. He goes, oh, I think I'm going to use that as an attraction for my lower gardens. I think if I dress the root ball up with plants and flowers, that that, that would be a beautiful log. There are no bathrooms in the mountain. So if you need to use the bathroom, we cannot express more. Please use the bathroom. Turn right at the end of the visitor center here. Follow it and turn left at the cafe. They're blue. They acclimate well in the Juno climate. They're actually up from the state of Washington. Смотри, какие интересные такие эти елочки. Елочки. Это бегония. Чудо. Oh, so if we could stop right here for a minute, you'll notice the arrangement on your right of the upside down flower tower by special team is actually the first one. Yes, it's a photograph. Yes, it's a photograph. Yes, it's a photograph. Everyone aboard. All right. So, my name is Katie. How are my uh, microphone levels? Can everybody hear me all right? Yes. It's beautiful. I will ask that everyone remain seated inside the vehicle at all times. And uh, please do keep your hands, arms, feet, legs, hearts, livers, kidneys, purses, chainsaws, everything important to you, really, inside the vehicle at all times. Those leaves have an abundance of thorns on them. And those thorns are very, very delicate, so they break off quite easily. And they have a delightful tip toward, a uh, delightful barb toward the tip of them that faces backwards, which will cause them to burrow their way deeper and deeper into your skin until you fester them back out. Oh yeah, they also have a staph infection, which they cause. So, to our left, those large maple-shaped leaves, abundant thorns, devil's club, don't touch the sky. Now up to our right, we have a much friendlier figure. That large flat rock with the uh, water running over it, that is Steve's rock. That's the rock that started it all. That's the one he was having a tussle with when he backed into that fallen tree, which led to the garden being here. So we, uh, we here at the garden on that rock. Now, I'm not allowed to stop anywhere on the way up the mountain. So I will ask if you have your cameras with you, keep them handy, and uh, maybe on a fast shutter speed, like a sports mode or something. So point out, I get a little bit too excited about the rainforest sometimes. So I have a nasty habit of interrupting myself when I'm talking about the plants. If you have any questions or I spoke unclearly or anything like that, please feel free to uh, to get my attention. You can either ask a question or uh, if I don't hear you, you can wave at me and I should see your hand waving in the mirror. 
Now here to our right we have our upside down flower tower shower. Just in case you are a little too warm today, you can jump in, you'll cool right off. Вижу, вижу, вижу. Подожди, а вот, а вот такие красивые. Как в Бегоне? Now this large, dark green, glossy leaf that looks a bit out of place in our forest is a native plant called skunk cabbage. Now it doesn't look like a skunk, so guess what, it does smell like it. It smells somewhere between uh, rotting flesh and skunk. Pretty nasty. But uh, it's a really neat plant ecologically. I'll talk about it a bit on the way down. Now a lot of these plants that we're seeing around us, the shrubs, oval green leaves and kind of reddish stems. Those are going to be blueberries. We have several species of them here on the property. These plants with the smaller oval green leaves and the triangular green stems, those are red huckleberries related to blueberries, but in my opinion, 10 times better. And the uh, other tall kind of silvery powdery blue leaves, those are going to be uh, false azalea, also called fool's huckleberry. Also very, very tasty. Now, uh, I'm sorry, the fool's huckleberry is not tasty. I don't know what I'm saying. The red huckleberry is. Here to the left, we have our five-star squirrel hotel, put in place by Steve for our local <laughs> Russian red-tailed squirrel. The current tenants are a little nuts, so we probably won't see them here today. Uh, if you've seen any squirrels or chipmunks here in Juneau, uh, um, the rest of the drive uphill has been landscaped by the glacier, making this effectively the glacier sea level. And ahead of us, we're gonna pass on the right-hand side a cliff face. This cliff face has kind of a concave shape to it. It's what's called a wave-cut escarpment. That does refer to ocean waves. Uh, so what's happened is as a glacier covers land, the weight of all that ice is gonna crush that land down, a lot like if you placed a heavy book on top of a sponge. So here's the, the cliff face we're talking about. You're up to the right. As that glacier then retreats, like the Mendenhall Glacier and most of the glaciers in our area are, the land is going to slowly uncrush back upwards in a process called post-glacial rebound or isostatic rebound. The land here in Juneau is currently rebounding at a rate of about 1.2 centimeters per year. So not super fast, but you can find cliff faces like that one uh, throughout Southeast Alaska up to an elevation of about 500 feet. Now, uh, and then look at the size of the trunk that those roots were supporting. That tree was 200 to 300 years old when it died, and that root structure is very, very typical of the trees in our area. So at any given point in the forest, if you were to dig down, you're going to go through a few inches of moss, a few inches up to maybe a few feet of soil, and then you're gonna hit solid rock. So what the trees do, since they can't grow their roots down for stability, is they spread them out sideways, and they interlock them with the other trees around them, kind of like they're holding hands, forming sort of a buddy system. And that is very important because in the winter time here, we get very strong winds called talking winds. And those winds can reach speeds of up to 150 miles per hour. That's 150. So anything not firmly rooted in place is just going to blow right over. Now those winds aren't considered hurricane winds because they come in waves uh, rather than a long sustained gust. So the way they get into that formation is as they come up from the top of the glacier, they cross several mountains and those mountains break them up into the waves. Now you're going to notice a series of gorgeous views down the shoulder of the mountain off to the left if you're good with heights. If you're not so good with heights, you may notice those views as well, but you're going to want to focus off to the right on the many fairy plants we have here. Back here, we're going to pass our donut tree. This tree here off to the left 
has a very interesting root structure, and it got that way because it sprouted next to a large boulder. Over time, as it grew larger, it grew around the boulder, and then eventually it became heavy enough that when those winds started knocking it back and forth, it kicked that boulder out of place and sent it tumbling down the mountainside to who knows where, leaving that tree with its really neat root structure. Now we've got three, three stumps up ahead of us. You'll notice the first one was taken down by a strong, unpredictable, powerful force of nature. We call Steve with a chainsaw. The other two were taken down by a much messier force, and that was those Taku winds. Um, you'll see a lot of splintered off trees like this. And uh, the reason they splinter with, rather than uh, uprooting entirely is going to be because of the uh, buddy system that they form underground. It's very effective in keeping them uh, upright in those strong winds. Now, the top of today's drive includes a 580 feet elevation. And then you guys are going to take a little stroll out to 600 feet elevation for a gorgeous panoramic view of the Juno area. Now, when I say uh, a hike, it's, it's one to two minutes, depending on how quickly you feel like moving. Uh, but if you do get to tell everybody back home that you hiked up to 600 feet today in less than five minutes without breaking a sweat. <laughs> Don't say all the way, otherwise you have to talk about me. It's a little less dramatic that way. Now you'll notice a lot of moss here in our forest. And uh, this moss is going to act as a natural sponge, retaining moisture so that the plants uh, can stay happy and healthy even when we have our droughts of 24, maybe even 48 hours. Incredibly rare for us to have a completely dry days. Now, as we uh, continue around this corner, we're going to see some more of that exposed dark gray rock. It's got very thin layers to it, and uh, those layers flake off pretty easily. This rock is called marine shale. It's one of the most common rocks here in Juno. So we'll see it up here off to either side of us, the left and the right. And that marine shale forms on the ocean floor. So it's, it's in flat layers when it forms. And then over time, it gets pushed up the side of the mountain through tectonic plate activity and other geologic forces. And it gets twisted into these other shapes that you see around us. And eventually, the pressure of that, of that force pushing it up the mountainside will compress it into a slightly thicker rock uh, thicker layers, there no. still are layers though. Смотри, it's a little написано? more brittle, a little Сколько harder, that's осталось? called slate. Вот but it's still got that dark slate gray color. Uh, now up to Сколько our left, минут? we've got a great view of how our road power. system is built. Oh, it's called a corridor road. Road. And it's the same road construction style that was used to crisscross. Это мы вышли наверх. Такая красота кругом. Фотографируй, фотографируй. Фотографируй. 